a new mouse. Warm sunlight streamed through the windows of Cinderella's parlor as she and her mouse friends shared afternoon tea. Even though the food was delicious, Cinderella found it difficult to enjoy the tasty treats. She was too busy thinking about her friend Gabrielle, who would be visiting very soon. Gabrielle was the prince's cousin, but she lived so far away that Cinderella didn't get to see her very often. Just then, a royal page entered the parlor. Lady Gabrielle has arrived, he announced. Gabrielle swept into the room and ran to hug Cinderella. It's so good to see you, dear, she said. As the two friends chatted excitedly, Jacques and Gus noticed that Gabrielle had an unusual item with her. What's that? Jacques said. He pointed eagerly to a fancy little house that Gabrielle had set on the floor. Gabrielle noticed the curious mice and explained right away. Let me introduce you to my beloved friend Babette. Gabrielle opened the little door to the house, and Babette walked out onto her hand. Jacques and Gus couldn't believe it. Babette was a mouse! I found little Babette lost in one of the manor bedrooms, Gabrielle said. After meeting your mouse friend, Cinderella, I just knew I had to take her in. Jacques and Gus waved to the new mouse, but Babette just stared at them. Would you like a crumpet, Babette? Cinderella asked. The mouse took a piece and ran back onto Gabriella's hand. She should have said thank you, Jack whispered to Gus. Rude, Gus agreed. Cinderella dear, you simply must show me the castle garden, Gabrielle said, setting down Babette. Jack, Gus, perhaps you can give Babette a tour of the castle, Cinderella suggested. Jack and Gus agreed and immediately began showing Babette all their favorite places in the castle. This is the library, Jacques said. Lots of books, Gus said, pointing. Babette looked around but didn't say a word. Then Jacques and Gus took Babette to the grand ballroom. You have a ballroom? Jacques asked, trying to start a conversation. Babette nodded and that was all. Jacques and Gus took Babette all over the castle, hoping to find something she would be interested in. But no matter where they went, Babette just nodded or stayed silent. That evening, Cinderella asked Jacques and Gus how their day with Babette had been. She's a snob, Jacques told Cinderella. Stuck up, Gus agreed. Now, now, Cinderella said gently. You hardly know her. Give her a chance. As Cinderella set the pair of mice down on the ground, she noticed something was missing. My bracelet, she gasped. It must have fallen off during Gabrielle's tour. We can find it, Cinderella, Jacques said. Oh, thank you for offering, Cinderella said. But we went all over the castle. The bracelet could be anywhere. No problem for Jacques and Gus Gus, Jacques said proudly. Follow us, Cinderella. They went to ask Gabrielle about the last time she remembered seeing the bracelet. Oh dear, I'm afraid I was so busy admiring the castle, I wasn't paying much attention to Cinderella's bracelet. I can help you look, a soft voice said. It was Babette, stepping out from her little house. Jacques and Gus looked suspiciously at Babette, but Cinderella spoke up for her. That would be wonderful. Thank you, Babette. Jacques reluctantly agreed. We check the mouse size places, and Cinderella checks the princess size places. The three mice scurried from room to room. They looked behind curtains, on top of cabinets, and even in the tea room. Gus checked inside an entire tea set. Gus, Gus, Cinderella's bracelet isn't in the teapot, Jacques laughed. Gus looked embarrassed, but Babette spoke up quietly. It never hurts to check. The mice continued searching the tea room until Babette let out a squeal of joy. Shock! Gus, look, she cried. Babette had found Cinderella's bracelet stuck between two chair cushions. Hooray, Jacques and Gus cheered. The pair of mice hopped down to help Babette free the heavy bracelet from between the cushions. You can tell Cinderella you found it, Gus said. Oh, I couldn't, Babette said, blushing. Suddenly, Jacques and Gus understood why Babette had been so quiet. Babette wasn't a snob, she was just shy. Be brave, Gus said, patting her on the shoulder. Cinderella is the nicest princess ever, Jacques said. You can talk to her. The mice found Cinderella looking through her bedroom. Jacques and Gus gently pushed Babette forward with the bracelet. Oh, you little dear, Cinderella cried. Did you find my bracelet? Babette blushed and nodded. Thank you, Cinderella said. Babette saw that she was surrounded by kind friends. She gathered all her courage, looked Cinderella in the eye, and said... You're welcome, princess. Now that the bracelet had been found, the three mice decided to play together. Gus had a wonderful idea. He grabbed Babette's paw. 
Hide and seek, he squealed. The three friends ran off together. They spent the rest of the day playing in the many castle rooms they had explored earlier. But their fun couldn't last forever. When it was time for Gabrielle to go home, Jacques and Gus were very sorry to say goodbye to their new friend. You okay? Mm-hmm. Come back soon, Gus said. Babette waved. I'll miss you, she said. Cinderella, Jacques, and Gus walked outside to see the carriage off. When Gabrielle and Babette were out of sight, Jacques turned to Cinderella. Babette, he said. She's so much fun. The best, Gus chimed in. Oh, really? Cinderella asked with a smile. She's not stuck up or a snob? We're sorry, Cinderella, Jacques said. That's all right, Jacques, Cinderella replied. I'm sure you'll be more patient with new friends in the future. Gus nodded sagely, while Jacques exclaimed, We sure will. The end. Are you done?